and around a bit here. I've had the phone sitting on a chair to record some of that, but this is the, uh, it's where you can see the model number on the unit. That's a Senna 09 HF, so a 9000 BTU model. There's the serial number. You can put that QR code anywhere you want, but that's where I had it set on these. That's the filter up top. Try to check that at least once a month. Depending on your house, you might have a lot of pet dander. You might find it perfectly clean, but try to check it. This is the, um, let me get a flashlight going here. But this is the damper that swings up and down that can be turned on or off. If we look inside here, you'll see the you'll see the inner damper. That's what does the side to side motion. And then behind that, you'll see the blue squirrel cage fan up in there. That's uh, prone to getting dirty if it doesn't get serviced and cleaned. With the filter off, you'll see up here, this is where the, the coil is, the heat exchanger. That's what gets uh, sprayed down with solution periodically to keep it running fresh and clean. One of the other most common problems is a drain getting clogged up. Just got the unit powered off, but again, you open it, you kind of grip it, pop one side and then the other. This is that intelligent eye that uh, you can set up some of the, the more involved stuff where it senses somebody in the room and does different power conservation. So this panel up here, um, it's got, that's where your Wi-Fi thumb drive is. That's what that blinking light is, which is normal. There's one screw there, which has already been removed. Also inside of here, that's just the LED display that displays the numbers, some connectors. This right here is the thermostat. It's one little wire. That's where it's sensing temperature, assuming you don't have it in that follow me mode. And before you do any of this, you should um, go throw the breaker, get the power secured, if you're going to be poking around in here. Wouldn't suggest it as a homeowner, unless you're comfortable doing it. But another thing, it's got these wires, and they're, they're all supposed to stay in these clips, or the unit, the casing won't close properly. If those wires are just kind of not in the place they're supposed to be, this hood isn't going to want to close and latch properly. It'll kind of get in the way. For this lower clip, there's uh, another two Phillips screws. I'll take those out real quick. Sometimes the bigger models have a third screw. I think the 24,000 head has a third screw that's hidden in the middle. There's like a little plastic clip to peel up, but now this whole lower clip comes out and it's a little tricky to get in and out at first. You got to kind of pop one edge and then the other. And there's, uh, there's clips down in here, plastic clips that it mates with to get locked in there. to get a second hand, but this whole clip, this whole clip piece once those two screws are out, 
tick some finesse, but it'll pop out of there. And you'll see this is where the the drain is typically connected to the condensate drain pipe. It sometimes might be on the other side, depending on the install, but this one has a, a plug in it right now. So it can drain from either side. The way we set this one up is it, it went out the right side. So that's got the plug in it. This has got the drain hose, but that you take a little screwdriver or needle nose plier. That's supposed to be locked up into here. But if you, uh, if you do have a unit that's not draining properly, that's where, that's where you would um, kind of pop the, the hose off and blast it with air or something else. Again, don't poke around with this unless you're comfortable and you have the power secured. But that's where the communication wire comes in. You can check voltages here and do some basic troubleshooting. Communication wire also goes out with the with the copper line set in the in the drain. Um, but once see that drain's popped off now, kind of pop it back in here. But this hole, it's pretty easy to do the servicings and cleaning on these where you where we're cleaning the copper coil, but in terms of cleaning that fan up in there, um, it's very hard if that starts getting nasty. Getting the flashlight going here. Now that it's stopped, we can get a much better look at it, but we can see that fan's very clean as well as the the, the dampers and everything behind it, but if that starts getting too nasty, it's possible to um, remove this entire assembly, which holsters the fan motor, this damper, and like the whole drain pan. So this is the electrical cover. I'm going to go uh, secure the breaker before we poke around anymore here. So we're being safe. Power is now off. By the way, this is a uh, like a manual override button. If your remote's not working or something else is going on, you can open this and manually hit it. And I think it just goes into an auto or cool mode. So as this hinges up, you'll see at the top, there's uh, two plastic tabs. If you kind of bend in, kind of bend in the top with your thumb here and you can just pop the whole thing off, get it out of the way. This is the connector that goes to the inner damper swing motor there. So that little motor drives the whole tray back and forth that swings that inner damper. That's where that connects. This is that blue connector. So we'll unplug that. There's another wire that's feeding the, uh, the fan motor. And I think that's this big one here. So everything goes into its spot, but if we're going to be removing that whole lower end, this is the fan. Okay, and then we'd, uh, again, make sure the power is secured, check it with the voltmeter. This has no power going to it, but we'll remove this um, this clamp that holds that wire in place, and then with a nice flat head, we'll remove the three terminals. I always wire it up red, black, white, one, two, three. Just make sure, however, that's wired up. 
is wired up the same at the outdoor unit. So if I'm red, black, white on one, two, three, just make it red, black, white, one, two, three, where it plugs into the outdoor unit. And then there's the ground as well. So that ground screw comes out all the way for that. These, you just loosen them up. If you loosen up too much, they're gonna fall and you're never gonna find them again. So just loosen them up enough for those forks to slide out. And you kinda, we can stick this and get it out of the way. Tuck it up in here. Drains out of the way. We've got the two other connectors, the fan and the motor for the damper out. Now this whole lower thing can pop out by loosening these two clamps. And again, this takes some finesse to remove. Um, you just kind of slowly rock it back and forth. I'll get this. So now that we've got the wires removed and these two clamps undone, kind of take it from the top at first. The bottom rather. And now you can see the whole thing's ready to come out. But the fan, if you kind of rock it a little bit carefully, the fan's kind of pushing up against the whole heat exchanger. So now the entire assembly that has the fan motor and the fan is out. This is also the whole drain pan where the condensate um, rains down from the evaporator and cooling mode. But from here, this whole thing could be taken apart and cleaned more thoroughly. Or if you had a replacement fan or motor, you'd plug it in here. Your inner damper. Now with that out, you can get a better look up into here, but from here, it's basically just that heat exchanger. This one looks very clean. 